1750. 1750. This is before the French and Indian War. The first house built in the Kentucky country. Hey everybody, this is Colonel Carson with Family Tree Nuts, and I'm at Dr. Thomas Walker Park here just south of Barberville, Kentucky. And here we have the replica cabin of the very first house ever built in Kentucky in 1750. Our story begins with Dr. Thomas Walker. Now, who is Dr. Thomas Walker? Dr. Thomas Walker was a physician, a planter, an explorer who served multiple terms in the Virginia General Assembly. He and his men explored Kentucky in 1750. That's 19 years before Boone ever came to Kentucky and 25 years before the first settlement of Kentucky. Dr. Walker was born January the 22nd in 1715 in King and Queen County, Virginia. He went to William and Mary University and became a physician. He married Mildred Thornton, widow of Nicholas Merriweather. The house that he lived in is called Castle Hill. He had 12 children, two of which became congressmen, John and Francis Walker. He was a vestryman in his church for 40 years. He was a member of the Virginia House of Burgesses from three different counties. And he was a trustee of the town of Charlottesville, Virginia. On July the 12th, 1749, the Loyal Land Company was founded with Thomas Walker as a leading member. The Loyal Land Company received a Royal Land Grant of 800,000 acres in southeastern Kentucky. Remember, this is before the 1763 treaty preventing American colonists from settling west of the Alleghenies. The Loyal Land Company appointed Dr. Thomas Walker to lead the expedition of those 800,000 acres in Kentucky. The expedition began on March the 7th, 1750 and ended on July 13th. They named many things Cumberland after the Duke of Cumberland. Remember, this is just five years after the 1745 defeat of Bonnie Prince Charlie at Culloden by the Duke of Cumberland and his cannon. Some say that Bonnie Prince Charlie was the rightful heir to the British throne, but he was defeated as a rebel by the Duke of Cumberland. This made the Duke of Cumberland a national hero. And that's why they named so many things after the Duke of Cumberland, such as the Cumberland Gap. Cumberland Mountain, the Cumberland River, and many other things. They also built the first house in Kentucky, and that's what this is a replica of right here. Under Virginia law, in order to claim land, you had to build a house. You also had to plant a crop of corn and harvest it. So that's why the men built a structure such as this. Now another thing about Dr. Walker's expedition into Kentucky is he had a later well-known individual with him, an Indian agent, a legislator, a surveyor, and later Revolutionary War General Joseph Martin. You may remember him as the one that built Martin Station just through the Cumberland Gap into Virginia. We actually have a video from there. Martin's son told Lyman Draper about how they named so many things after Cumberland on the expedition. He told them that when they arrived in the Cumberland Gap, they had a little bit of rum left. And the men, along with their Indian guides, drank to the health of the Duke of Cumberland right there in the middle of the Cumberland Gap. Now, one of the best things about the expedition was Dr. Walker kept a journal. He made entries almost every day, except for on the Sabbath. This is invaluable to us because we can now learn about all the adventures that they had. The journal is really fun to read, and it's kind of like Facebook posts of today, of their adventure. So let's talk about some of the journal entries that Dr. Walker made. I said earlier that he usually skipped the Sabbath for a journal entry, but one time he said that they had to chase their horses for six or seven miles. I don't think that was a very restful Sabbath, do you? And then one day they visited a religious sect called the Brotherhood of Euphrates, or the Dunkards. Now, this is a very unique group of people. It said that they didn't shave and they didn't lie on beds. They didn't eat meat. They were all unmarried and everything was in common stock. They didn't baptize people, but they did keep the Sabbath. These people were in the back country and maybe a 
one of the early examples of what we would call today as a cult. But either way, quite an interesting group of people. On March 27th, Dr. Walker wrote that it snowed on them until noon. And then one night, the dogs were uneasy all about them. And the next morning, they found the tracks of about 20 Native Americans that had been walking around their camp all night. I'd say that would be a little unnerving. On April 1st, which was another Sabbath entry, it says that Dr. Walker marked his name on a birch tree. On April 5th, his horse choked on some reeds and he drenched him with water. On April 6th, they said it was too wet to move. I'm sure they enjoyed that day off. On April 7th, they said it snowed most of the day and a bear injured one of the dogs. They shot the bear and the dog had to ride on a horse until it recovered. On April 13th, they passed through Cave Gap, which they named Cumberland Gap, as we said earlier. On April 16th, it was pouring rain, and they made a pair of Indian shoes because the shoes that they had had already wore out. Then on April the 17th, they found and named the Cumberland River. On April 19th, they found a salt lick. Many believe that that's the famous flat lick. And it was here that Ambrose Powell was bit by a bear. Then on April the 23rd, Walker, Ambrose Powell, and Colby Chu went on from the rest of the group to do some more exploring. The rest of the party stayed here to build a house and to plant corn and peaches. On April the 28th, they reached back to the group. One of their horses had been bit in the nose. Also, Colby Chu and his horse fell down an embankment. Dr. Walker bled him and he recovered. On May the 1st, another horse was bitten by a snake. On May the 6th, Ambrose Powell, remember him? He was the one that got bit in the knee by a bear. Well, today he sprained his other knee. Talk about bad luck. On May the 9th, they reached the Lawless River and they saw all the laurels that were around there. This is what Laurel County, Kentucky today is named after. They said that the country here was rugged for days. We're pretty sure that they went through modern day Rockcastle County. Rockcastle County was another area that the settlers dreaded because it was the last place of rocky footing and difficult travel before they went into the open expanse of the bluegrass. On May the 10th, they yet again made another pair of Indian shoes because they had wore out the pair that they had just made a few weeks ago. Then on May the 31st, they camped right near what ended up being a wolf's den and they had to shoot at them all night long in order to keep them away. Then on June 4th, they were just setting up camp when a black cloud arose and poured rain. Then hail, then winds, and then it blew their tent away. Several trees fell all around them. The men ran in all different directions in confusion in order to find shelter. And after the storm, they all gathered at the original campsite and fortunately, all was well. Then on June 5th, they couldn't follow the original Indian path because of all the downed trees that were all over the place. Then on June the 19th, they came across a big bull buffalo that was so aggressive that they had to shoot it. Then on June 20th, Dr. Walker's horse was snake bit. Now he didn't have any bear oils to use, so he rubbed it with a piece of fatty meat. From this point on, we know he was in modern day Eastern Kentucky and Western West Virginia. And he made lots of entries in his journal about crossing the hard coal lands. They found coal all over the place. And by June 29th, he was in the modern day Greenbrier County, West Virginia area. On July the 7th, he ran into five men and they told him they were only eight miles from a small community of houses. They had finally come back to civilization. On July the 8th, they shaved, made new shoes yet again, and they made it to a fellow by the name of Walker Johnston's house at about noon. The folks there informed Dr. Walker's party that over the last few days that Indians had been stealing their horses and other supplies. The next few days they spent getting their horses shod and enjoying the hot springs baths in the area. On July the 13th, Dr. Thomas Walker got home about noon. On the journey, they killed 13 buffalo, eight elk, 53 bears, 20 deer, four wild geese, and 150 turkeys, and tons of small game. Walker said they could have easily killed three times that amount if they had needed it. The land was truly rich. Now later on in 1754, plans were being made for Dr. Walker to lead an expedition to find the Pacific Ocean using the Missouri River. This would have been almost 50 years before Lewis and Clark led that very expedition. 
Before the plans for the expedition were finalized, they became squashed due to the breaking out of the French and Indian War. Later on, Dr. Walker served as Commissary General during the French and Indian War. He was present with George Washington and even Daniel Boone at Braddock's defeat at Fort Duquesne in 1755. In 1779, Dr. Walker was commissioned to survey a boundary between Virginia and North Carolina. This line to this day is known as the Walker Line, and it separates modern-day Kentucky and Tennessee. He had another famous person along with him to do that surveying expedition, Colonel Richard Henderson, the leader of the Transylvania Company, although it's said that the two didn't get along at all. Over the years, Dr. Walker was called on several times to negotiate with Native Americans. Some of these was at the Treaty of Stanwix, the Treaty of Lockerbie, and the aftermath of the Battle of Point Pleasant, which many say was the first battle of the Revolutionary War. And then later during the Revolutionary War in 1781, his house was on the route that Bannister Tarleton took to surprise and try to capture the Virginia legislators in Charlottesville, Virginia. You might remember Bannister Tarleton from that movie, The Patriot. He's that man that many people say is a demon or the devil, the man with the blue eyes. Now while the movie The Patriot is fiction, Bannister Tarleton definitely is not fiction, and he was a very hated British officer. Bannister Tarleton led his troops to the house of Dr. Thomas Walker. Dr. Walker fed them a big breakfast and even gave them alcohol trying to delay them a little longer. He was hospitable to Bannister Tarleton's men long enough to give Jack Jewett, the Paul Revere of the South, time to make his 40-mile ride through the wilderness to warn the Virginia legislature that they were about to be captured so they could escape. Those men included Thomas Jefferson. Many believe that the heroic effort of Jack Jewett's ride potentially saved the war for the Americans. And had it not been for Dr. Thomas Walker's hospitality to the British troops, Tarleton might have been successful in capturing the legislature. Another thing that Dr. Thomas Walker is credited with is discovering coal in Kentucky. And he later became an advisor to Governor Thomas Jefferson. Dr. Walker died at his home, Castle Hill, on November the 9th, 1794. And his legacy lives on to today. And at Family Tree Nuts, we are thankful to help preserve his legacy. So, here we are at the Dr. Thomas Walker State Park, just south of Barberville, Kentucky, where the very first house in Kentucky was built. And remember, Family Tree Nuts, let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree.